Hello, I'm Jonathan Biznet, and this is a keyboard keypad scanning circuit. And basically, I'm going to show you how this is laid out. So here I have a diagram. The diagram basically starts over here. We've got some column scan logic, which exists from basically three chips. There's a 555 timer chip that puts out a regular frequency, uh, about 68 hertz, uh, going into a 74169, which is a counter chip, which will generate the values of a two-bit binary uh, counter, so 00011011. Those two bits are fed into a 74138, which is a 3 to 8 decoder, and are then used to basically uh, activate one column at a time on a hexadecimal keypad organized as four buttons by four buttons. When you press a button on the keypad, there's some logic in here first that will basically pick up the key press. It uses a 7486 to kind of deal with two buttons being pressed at once. It's ex an exclusive OR chip. And it uses uh, a 7402 NOR gate to basically do some latching of that logic in a uh, an SR flip-flop SR latch type format. Also when you press the button there is a 7400 NAND chip that is basically used to lock in latch in the value that you press from what you pressed on the keyboard. These then are both, I'm sorry, that actually that decoder chip determines which row you pressed. Uh, so you get again the two, di the two digit binary value 00011011. That is fed into the latches here, which are done with a 7402 NOR and a 7474 flip-flop. And those lock in the values. That information then, using that key press logic we had before, is locked into a display driver latch, which will cause all of that data to go to the, the output and then free the keyboard back up to be used again. It's, it's controlled by this latch reset logic, another 555 chip, this time configured in a monostable format so that once this key is pressed, this logic starts and eventually resets the latches so another key can be pressed. Anyway, taking the display driver output latch, this is then fed into some logic that decides whether we're dealing with the values 0 through 9 or 10 through 15. It looks first to determine which value we have and that is the basically the way we do that is look for the high order bit of the four bits to be turned on and either of the middle two bits to be on that tells me I have a 10 through a 15 value then basically I feed if it's 0 through 9 I feed it directly into the 74 373 buffer to hold it to to control sending it to the output if it's 10 through 15, I do some additional logic to convert those hexadecimal values to a decimal value. Basically, looking at the values 10 through 15, I need the values 0 through 5. What I do is I take the least significant bit and let it pass through. As you'll notice, they match between the two sets of values. The second bit is simply inverted. If it's a 1 here, it's a 0 in the output. The third bit is determined by anding the middle two bits, so the only time that I, the third bit goes on is if I have 14 or 15. And then finally, the high order bit is always off. So that logic is also done in here using basically um, a, an AND gate, uh, a hex inverter, and an OR gate. And then finally, that is fed into this other buffer. Looking then at whether the value coming in is 0 through 9 or 10 through 15, controls this enable which determines which of these buffers put their output to the seven segment decoder and that value is finally fed out to the LED. That same control bit that decides 0 through 15 also is what will turn on or turn off the 1 in this output. That's basically how this circuit works. Okay so here's our circuit. Uh, this, is, this logic over here is basically the chips that perform the column scans that create the two-bit values to scan these different columns, uh, the 555, the counter, and the 3 to 8 decoder. Then over here are the, are, this is the logic here to determine that a, keyboard, that a key was pressed on the keypad. And then there's also some logic here to catch uh, the uh, 
to catch the value of the row from which we actually press. So you get your 0, 1, 0, your 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Uh, this chip over here will then also catch the two bits that drove the column and latch those. Uh, the two bits that drive the row are latched here and those bits are then combined into this driver, this buffer driver that drives the display logic. We talked about the 373 chip. Uh, the value from the key press is what is used to latch that 4-bit value into this chip. At the point that that's latched in then again the the other 555 timer that's sitting up here, after some short delay, it's in a monostable mode, will go through and reset the latches to allow you to press another key. The, the values coming off the driver latch then are driven into this logic here, which we talked about, that determines whether it's 0 through 9 or 10 through 15, and then drives, in one case, drives this latch with the value 0 through 9, or better yet, a buffer with 0 through 9, or this buffer with 10 through 15. And then the control logic decides which of these is fed to the seven segment display uh, decoder driver, and then to the display. So as you'll see, we can press the button 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15. Basically any button we press it will be able to determine what we did, how it shows up. Basically it, it uh, decodes whichever key I'm pressing and puts the output to our, our seven segment display. So that's the circuit. I hope you found it interesting.